Welcome to the Leaders of Learning podcast. I'm your host, Ling Ling. Season four is a short but special season. We partnered with French Tech Podcast to interview some of the most powerful and influential women at the Women's Forum Asia. This event was held in September 2019 in the beautiful Raffle City Convention Hall in Singapore. Check out our website at leadersoflearning.asia or follow us on LinkedIn, Instagram, Pinterest, and YouTube for more information about this special season. Through the years, we are seeing more women in non-traditional industries rising up to become top management. Today, many are starting their own businesses. The success in recent years is not necessarily due to gender parity. We just need to give equal opportunity to all genders. One such example is Sarah Cheng, CEO of Fuji Xerox Singapore. Being CEO of a multinational tech company is a big responsibility and a tough job. But being an Asian woman CEO dominating the tech industry is solid proof that gender and cultural background does not hinder her path to becoming a successful leader. What do women need to prepare in order to survive the business and tech industry? Are women more confident now than in the last decades? We have the great honor to speak to Sarah Chang, CEO of Fuji Xerox Singapore. She is responsible for the company's overall strategic growth and further strengthening its customer commitment, digital transformation, and employee engagement. She brings with her 25 years of experience in general management, business development, and consulting. Sarah is a veteran in building teams and organizations, as well as establishing collaborative leadership models in large companies. This episode was recorded in the busy lounge of the Raffles Convention Center. We apologize for the background chatter. Hello, my name is Ling Ling and we're here at the Women's Forum Asia. Uh, right here in Singapore, and today we have a very special guest, Sarah Chang, CEO of Fuji Xerox Singapore. Welcome, Sarah. Thank you, Lin Lin. Good morning. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for being with us today. You just got off the panel called Embracing Humility When AI Meets with Emotional Intelligence. And that was such a lovely panel. What a panel great subject. Were, yeah, it was, it was, uh, I love the diversity of the people on the panel, and you brought so much of a good perspective when it comes to this topic, too. So I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed listening to you guys. Yeah. Uh, so let's dive in into our questions, which is like, you have a rich experience as a female leader in the tech industry from your days in Teradata to today in Fuji Xerox. In, in that time and space, do you see any difference in gender diversity between your days in Teradata and today in Fuji Xerox? Uh, huge. Huge. Um, I think the uh, in terms of uh, uh, by the way, let me give you a little bit uh, data points. Right in the techno in high tech industry today, we have five percent of the CEOs are female. Overall, in STEM industry, we're talking about between twenty two to twenty eight percent globally by country. Right, and I believe the time when I started doing data analytics with with the uh, Teradata, uh, we had very few. I was the, I was the only industry consultants in Europe. I was in Europe at the time. Uh, and then later on, I brought that business back to Asia. I was the only sales director uh, in Asia for that. So it is uh, uh, getting much better. And what I see today also, I'm very encouraged, is the number of fe- young female entrepreneurs. You know, when I started Korea, I think most women are thinking about working for a stable, large multinational company so we can travel around and we have a long career path. But today, I saw so many, I see so many young women. They are so brave. <laughs> they are so energized and they're so bold and they take their fate into their own hands. Uh, in technology, I see a lot of uh, female uh, technology technologists that uh, owns and uh, start their own business. I think that's a fantastic movement. 
Oh, yeah. That's such a huge difference between wanting a stable career because, you know, you want stability for your family and for yourself and yeah. to become someone who's an entrepreneur. And that yeah, requires and, a lot of and courage they take and risk taking. I, I yeah. really admire that. I, I never had that uh, gut. <laughs> Yes. But I'm sure in your position as a woman leader in tech, you do have to take risk. And taking risk is probably one of the greatest fears of women. And you spoke about fear in the panel just now. So can you share some of your thoughts of what are some of today's barriers of fears to achieving maybe gender parity in the tech industry? It's a big subject. But if I may just talk about fear, uh, I think I'd like to bring back to self-confidence. I think, you know, as uh, uh, female professionals, as young little girls, uh, we need to condition and we need to grow our self-confidence. Because if you believe you can do anything, then you can do it in anywhere and you can do it in any jobs, right? Um, personally, curiosity has been my personal motto since I was 15. I left my family when I was 15 and I left my country when I was 22. And I moved around three continents, 10 cities, um, five countries and you know, multiple, multiple jobs. And I always move around from, you know, from finance to sales to consulting uh, to product management uh, and then to account management and then to business development and then to general management. So I think it's this sense of curiosity just keep me wonder and I want to know what I don't know. And I, don't e I didn't even know what I didn't know, but I just love to find out. I think that's one thing. I, I look at me and, you know, my classmates and my friends. I have this insatiable um, curiosity and I want to go to places I've never been and I want to be with people that they are different from me. So in that sense, there's always a very naive confidence in me that and my parents, the best present they gave me was they let me make my own decisions. When I was 15, for a Chinese girl, the youngest girl in the family, it's not easy. I, I learned to respect and appreciate that. It was very hard, but they let me, they let me fly. Uh, so the kind of sense of uh, confidence, the sense of uh, curiosity, I think that drives me. And I want to encourage everyone. We're all different. But I want to say that, you know, you can do it. We can do it. Um, take a risk. When you're uncomfortable, you are learning. Don't be comfortable. Don't be complacent. The world is moving too fast. Uh, and no matter where you are, it doesn't have to be in technology, you know. It, anywhere we, anywhere we want to be, you can. And anywhere you go, you you need to take risk. It's a mindset. I can complete to completely relate to what you say when it comes to confidence and curiosity, because I myself am a very curious person, which is I Great. just why I've become a podcaster, because exactly. I have the opportunity to interview people like you and learn from them and speak to so many amazing people. Oh, you know, the podcast is the best, the best discovery for me last month. I didn't use this before. And then my friend asked me, are you using podcast? I said, what is that? And then he showed me how to do this. I tell you, this opens such a Pandora box for me. I'm learning. <laughs> I'm learning language. I'm learning Italian. I am learning uh, the AI. Okay. And I'm update my own data uh, analytics, uh, um, refresh my own knowledge on that. And I'm learning. I'm, I'm just learn listen to anything um, on TED Talk. It's fantastic. So I am actually, you will be happy to hear this. Everywhere I go, I'm actually telling people, to sign on to podcast is such a fantastic learning, incredible wealth of all kinds of knowledge and all kinds of information. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for helping to spread the word about podcasting. I, also, I truly believe that podcasting is a wonderful way to, to learn and it's free and you can uh, quench your thirst of curiosity by going out to look for the different kinds of podcasts. This is one of the best examples of what technology can do for us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it definitely is. And along with curiosity is this desire to want to learn. And on your panel, oh, you mentioned about podcasting, but you also mentioned about Coursera. And could you share with us why is learning and curiosity so important for, for women in tech and being able to stay abreast in the fast-changing, moving technology industry? <laughs> for me, I think there are probably two major drivers. Right, One is... I've been invited to podcast or interview <laughs> sessions like this, and I need to have updated my content to, <laughs> to, uh, to, to talk, to share. Uh, and I enjoyed it. 
Um, and the second thing really is the world is moving very fast. And if we really do not, do not move, we're, we're, we're going backwards, right? If you speak Chinese, you say, 滚石不生台. You know, if you're rolling, a rolling stone uh, doesn't get uh, mold. And that, so, so besides the sense of curiosity, curiosity naturally um, comes naturally to me, I think I also feel the pressure. You know, I do because when I speak to my employees, when I speak to my team, when I encourage them to improve, expand, I need to do, I, I need to demonstrate, you know, I need to be a role model. And in our company, we absolutely are talking about how do we create a curiosity mindset for everyone and how do we uh, put it into a uh, structured and unstructured um, formality that we can help our uh, leaders, help our young generations to up, um, up on their learning spirit and uh, learning opportunities. That is fantastic. And it's so wonderful to have you here. So as part of a partnership with the Women's Forum in Asia, uh, as you know, the French tech initiative, Women in Tech, is all about supporting female entrepreneurs and bringing more diversity to the tech ecosystem. Uh, we do that through our movement called Dare to be a Woman in with interviews of women in tech experts, events, workshops, and to become female business angels and informal events for female entrepreneurs. Uh, could you share with us why you think such initiatives are important for women entrepreneurs globally? Yes. Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you to, uh, uh, to the French society. I want to say, say thank you to France as a country because you are one of the leaders in terms of setting the vision, uh, uh, providing opportunities for women, career-wise, you know, social benefit. You, I, I think you are one of the uh, really model country, uh, countries for um, the government that provide the environment for women to, again, be their best, right? Um, so any organizations like that is fantastic. What I believe is, Again, I don't believe little girls have to be technologies, all of us. No, but I do believe we need to provide the opportunity. So women have choices. And we shouldn't be restricted in thinking about we can only be nurses or teachers or, um, you know, lawyers and, and, and accountants. You know, the true equality is about equal opportunities, right? And uh, let me give you an example. Last week, I just read this article. The ba Barbie dolls. Yeah, Barbie they are, dolls. They are creating three new Barbies. Oh. One is a pilot, one is an engineer, and one is a flight attendant. And I think this is one of the change we're seeing in terms of quote unquote social conditioning mm -hmm. for the female population, right? Because we need to give little girls from very, very young age to give them the imagination what they can be, what they could be. And that's not limit their imagination. And from there on, you know, from an education perspective, we provide equal opportunities from job opportunities, right? That, that's how we grow. And again, we, I don't want to look at a number because if you say 50% of high tech uh, people are female, then we're equal. You know, I, I don't think that's, uh, uh, that's the ideal objectives. Again, equal opportunities and we in equip women little girls the condition the society the support the encouragement that they can choose whatever they whatever they want to be oh that is so lovely equal opportunities for girls for who they want to be and i'm sure some of our listeners are women who are very very talented and aspire to be more than how society has con conditioned them to be so what would your advice be for these talented women who, ex who aspire to become a leader in tech such as yourself? Um, thank you. I, let me just share um, my, my personal uh, experience. I think for us, you know, in a, a probably my experience, you know, is more limited to uh, multinational companies and mostly American companies until my current employer being a Japanese multinational. Um, so I, I do want to um, apologize if, if the, the scope is a bit narrow, but I hope it also apply to entrepreneurs, right? Um, I think for uh, to, to really be uh, moving, I don't want to say successful, right? It's because success is a very elusive word. I want to say that if you have an objective you want to reach, 
um, for for a female professional. Number one, dare to be different. When I started my job, I was in the U.S. I worked for Procter and Gamble, one of the toughest、uh, corporate America, and one of the best training ground. So I was one of the very few Asian female.、Right? And when I went、uh, my my second job, I was in Europe again. People, pe- people in the company. I, I joined a high tech company. They thought I was a new tea lady from China, right? So I would say dare to be different, right? I know that whatever I say, whatever I do, being an Asian female in in the States or in、uh, in Europe, people remember me, people notice me, people pay attention to me. So what I do is I I take full advantage of that, and I want people to remember me, and I build my personal brand from every interactions. So this becomes, you know, quite a good advantage for me because people, again, our senior management remember me after they saw me in certain situations. So, th- and and even that, it also shows your confidence, right? So that's the first one: dare to be different and take advantage、uh, of being different. Angela Merkel said that if a man wears same blue suit for three days, nobody's going to say anything. If I wear the same dresses for for for, for two days, people are talking about it. And I said, "Go, Angela, wear a red dress, wear a pink dress. That's be different. Then people see you, people follow you, people listen to you, give your point of view." The second one is about ask for what you want. Nobody is going to come and ask. Don't, don't wait for your boss and say you're ready to be promoted. Okay. So when I first started my career in high tech, I was、um, I was actually in sales. And then our company bought、uh, Teradata, the data mining data warehousing company. And I said,、mm, "That's very interesting." So I like to go in there, but most people have a consulting background going into the data analytics field. So I went to see the head, uh, con- uh, the leader of the consulting organization. So I said, "Bob, you don't know me, but this is my background. I'm willing to learn. Here's my credential. When you have an opening next time, I would really appreciate if you could consider me." Eight months later, he called me. And I started a job as a consultant in the data analytics environment. Right? You ask for it,、um, and then I said I like to go international because at that time、I、was in the U.S. I said I like to go international because my background and my tie with Asia. Then I get a job to run the Asia Business Development Organization. So you need to understand what you, what is your strength, what do you want, your capability, your inspiration, and you ask for it. Number three, I would say that find a mentor. It doesn't have to be woman. It doesn't, you know, it, it it can. It doesn't matter. But you find someone experienced, someone have a coaching mentality, someone can. You can ask any questions with, without needing to sugarcoat,、uh, and someone can show you the 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 especially in the multinational companies and probably for entrepreneurs. You know, I know that you know the financing. You know the 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 big world out there. Find a mentor. Yeah, you know, it's it's very very important. Last one I would say is what we do here in Women's、uh, Forum: networking, networking. If I had,、uh, if I wanted to do something differently when I was younger, I would say I would have started networking sooner. In the past, networking sounds like a so such a, a pretentious word. It's like okay, you pretend to be want to be my be my friend, and actually you're trying to see if I, you know, if I can offer you a job or you know make you a connection. It's really not like that. It really is not. Through networking, I met so many friends,、uh, and then we have a, a, a safe network that we can share. Especially in Singapore, you know the the corporate environment is very tight. And now through Women's Forum from last year, I have a core group of of girlfriends, and we have very、uh, and some of us are in insurance, banking, you know, high tech. It really doesn't matter. But as a senior man- management, actually, sometimes can be very lonely. And this becomes a friend that you know we can talk about some of the tough environment or tough decisions that we have to make、uh, at work. It's 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 fantastic, and through that network you meet more people, right? So build your network as soon as possible. Those are really, really wonderful advice for women who aspire to be leaders. And what what I'm going to take away from this is exactly what you say about networking, because I find networking 
uh, well, actually a little bit anxious because you have to go up to people and introduce yourself and then sort of like do a mini pitch. Oh, this is what I do, but it's so uncomfortable to do it. And now thinking back in my own career, I wish I had done networking much earlier on. And it's not really... Never too late. Never too late, no. And <laughs> if I'd done it earlier, I would have had a greater core of friends to be able to rely on. It's not just about pitching my business, it's to have that group of people that you can rely on if you need anything. And also in the corporate world, actually, the senior, the more senior you go, the the job, the, the career opportunity actually comes more from a word of mouth. So it, it really is, it is very important. Yes. Thank you so much, Sarah, for taking the time to join us today. I really received some golden nuggets from you. You're very welcome. Thank you. Thank you. That was Sarah Chang, CEO of Fuji Xerox Singapore. We just spoke about developing the next generation of Asian female leaders in tech. For more podcasts from the Women's Forum Asia, check out the French Tech Podcast on YouTube. If you enjoy listening to this podcast, take a moment to rate and review us on Apple Podcasts, CastBox, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you download your podcast. You can follow us on LinkedIn, Instagram, Pinterest, and YouTube. If you believe this podcast show will help a friend, a colleague, or a family member, please share this episode with them via social media or your podcast app. We want to make Leaders of Learning a great show for the year 2020. Please share with us your feedback, preferences, and insights on our website at leadersoflearning.asia. We look forward to hearing from you soon. I'm your host, Ling Ling. Thank you for listening to the Leaders of Learning podcast.